flare-ups over Tibet are nothing new, but we want to take a closer look at how Beijing and the people of Tibet view this issue. CCTV's Wang Guang recently spent time in Tibet, and he joins us now with a closer look at how the Dalai Lama is being viewed not just in Beijing, but in Tibet as well. Right, Mike. Having lived in both countries, I would say the Dalai Lama is perhaps one of the most divisive figures. Um, I know here he's perceived as a adorable, lovely, friendly, and godlike figure. But in China, people perceive him as a very different, in fact. And 1951 was a cru crucial year. It was that year the Chinese Communist Party, after winning the Civil War, re-entered Tibet. And before this entry, many people in the West believe Tibet was this Shangri-La-like utopia where everything was so beautiful. And it was a Chinese party, Communist Party who ruined everything. But even most, his most historians would agree that Tibet was no Shangri-La before 1951. It was no utopia. In fact, um, it was a feudal serfdom where the top 1% uh, is uh, in possession of the rest of the Tibetans, where they keep them as serfs and slaves. And the Dalai Lama was in this theocracy, was in fact the ruling uh, aristocracy and uh, representing the entrenched interests. So when the Chinese Communist Party, we were taught and told, uh, entered, um, re-entered Tibet, um, the Dalai Lama was obviously not very happy about the change of status quo, so he fled the country with the help of the CIA. So by and large, in China, people perceive him to be uh, as much a political figure as a religious figure mm -hmm. because of his remarks um, abroad about anti-Beijing remarks. But we have also noticed that his softened his tones over the years, proposing for uh, meaningful autonomy, not total independence. But it seems like his delegation in Beijing are stuck over their definition of what this greater autonomy should be. And you mentioned it was not a Shangri-La. So talk to us about the modernization that's been underway there in China uh, over the years. Um, what is Tibet like these days? Well, um, I think it's true that managing a multi-ethnic and multi-religious society is not easy. I mean, um, there's a lot of work to be, needs, that needs to be done. I don't think this is um, problems, right, because China is a communist state or the single party state. Many countries face similar problems. I mean, look at the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, look at here in America. It has had problems dealing with ethnic minorities um, for, for centuries. And uh, even in Spain, they have the vast provinces trying to split from the Spanish authority. Uh, in Tibet, what I saw on the ground was like this. Um, they're happy Tibetans and they're unhappy Tibetans. Their main grievances include the fact that they don't think they can, they're well represented because they're always number two or number three in the hierarchy of local governments. The number one is always us, Han Chinese. And some of their grievances also include uh, lack of access to the books and images of their most respected spiritual leader. But on the other hand, what you don't often hear in the, in the Western media are the fact that there are a lot of happy Tibetans. Uh, in Lhasa, the, the capital, I happened to meet a bunch of young kids in a school where they were doing this uh, cool thing that they try to type Tibetan, they try to use this newly invented technology to type Tibetan language into their mobile phones and computers so they can use Tibetan language apps. So this modernity and modern infrastructure technology is, tr is actually helping them to rediscover their roots. Mm. Never forget your roots, your, your own language. So I think, yes, uh, as Han Chinese, we're atheists by and large. So. It's, sometimes it's hard for us to put in the shoes of um, the believers, of the, the Buddhists. Um, we, of course, we can be more respectful of the Tibetan culture and the languages. And I do think that the Tibetan language can be more widely used in government buildings uh, by government officials, by the Han officials, so there can be a better and more um, meaningful integration. Wang Guan, thank you so much for all those perspectives. Certainly appreciate it.